So uh, I want to provide these top line numbers from 2024 to 2023, because again, these self-reported numbers do reflect a general wage increases from 2023 to 2024. We would expect to see that each year. Um, cost of living goes up. Obviously, we know inflation is something top of mind for people. Uh, the uh, the reported salaries uh, across all positions have increased uh, in the lab. Um, I want to dive into a specific aspect of that in a second, but I, I do want to, to just note that uh, you'll notice some of the biggest jumps here are in, uh, as a percentage, are in the tech positions, are in the technician and technologist roles. Um, that's important because these are our frontline staff. These are our bench testing personnel doing many of your uh, of your lab tests. Um, they are kind of the lifeblood uh, of the laboratory. Uh, and so making sure that your techs are being compensated in line with uh, both uh, your state, um, local, and, and national averages is going to go a long way to ensuring that your hiring and retention uh, remains competitive. To that end, I do want to talk about a couple of caveats with those numbers. Um, so when we report these numbers out, we, we ask folks for their location, where they work. And uh, I think that's very helpful because when we look at national averages, which was the last slide, we lose sight of, uh, of high cost of living states that may skew the numbers to the upside. So. Um, we could really spend all day carving up the map and saying, you know, certain metro areas, certain geographies, certain places are a little bit, or, you know, have higher cost of living are going to result in higher wages for folks. But I think backing out and just looking at saying, like, what are the three states that have, generally speaking, the highest cost of living uh, in the United States, where we also had a, a uh, relevant number of respondents? Um, that's California, Hawaii, and, and New York. And you'll see when we uh, pull those folks out of the overall averages, it does bring down the, uh, the average uh, compensation level. So whereas our national, uh, if we include all respondents, uh, manager uh, salary, for example, is $101,000 a year, if we look at just those high cost states of California, Hawaii, and New York, we see an average closer to 141,000. And of course, if you know, if you work in California, for example, uh, your number is going to, to be uh, even higher. Um, once we, you know, pull those numbers out, uh, you'll see, for example, that the, um, that the manager, uh, you know, average nationwide drops to 97,000, again, removing those high cost of living states. Um, Michelle had a question about Hawaii's cost of living. Um, it, it's all uh, sort of variable. Uh, the uh, Hawaii has a very high cost of living, as, as you're aware, if you live there or if you've experienced any staffing there. The experience that I have in staffing for the state of Hawaii, uh, the pay rates aren't necessarily as high in keeping with the cost of living in Hawaii as you would expect. However, they do exceed the national averages in almost all cases. Um, so again, you know, when I'm, I'm trying to help, you know, trying to pull or, or tease out uh, some numbers that could skew things to the upside, uh, I do want to take a look at Hawaii because uh, almost all of our respondents from the state of Hawaii report uh, above average wages in these categories. Uh, compared to the national average. And again, the goal here is to pull out statistical outliers to help assess where you should be thinking about um, compensation for your lab techs if you live in one of these non-high cost geographies. Uh, so uh, looking at these again, once we pull out those high cost of living states, uh, we see some changes uh, across the board as some uh, general lowering of, of the uh, of the comp levels, uh, CLIA lab director, we see compensated at $218,000 uh, without California, Hawaii, and New York taken into consideration. 
administrative lab director uh, being compensated at around 106, 136,000, excuse me, managers at 97,000, technologists at 77,000, and technicians at 59,000. I do want to pause here for a second because, you know, again, I, I, as Alex introed me at the, uh, at the start of this call, uh, I do lead our recruiting and staffing division here at Lighthouse, and I have the opportunity to work with um, at any given time, dozens of labs across the country and, and hundreds in my career, if not thousands, uh, who are looking at this question of, you know, is my compensation competitive with what's out there? And, and I think one of the biggest changes I've seen in my, in my career and my time doing this work is that there's really a, a, a marked change pre and post COVID. Um, so uh, my, uh, my feeling or, or my observation rather pre and post COVID is that uh, labs are having a hard time sometimes wrapping their mind around the new standard for compensation, particularly at the bench level. Uh, it used to be kind of common to see labs paying their technologists, for example, 25 to $30 an hour, um, even within the last you know, five, six years. Uh, that we're finding increasingly is no longer the um, the acceptable compensation level for many, many geographies. Uh, we are seeing wages there on the technologist side um, closer to $35 to $40 an hour, uh, particularly among techs with uh, three to five plus years of experience. Um, technicians uh, on the same side uh, will see a similar rate of change uh, Whereas it may have been common uh, within the recent past to pay in the low 20s per hour for uh, folks with an MLT, uh, an associate's degree and, and an MLT, uh, we are seeing those wages creep up closer to an annual salary figure of 60000 which breaks down to an hourly rate of 27 to $30 an hour. Um, now there's a lot that goes into that. There's shift differentials. There's other aspects of that compensation. There's overtime. Um, but the point is that the paradigm is changing and, and with as much inflation as uh, we have uh, seen in the last couple of years, um, it, it has turned into a scenario where laboratories really have to ask themselves if, you know, if they are still competitive uh, with uh, with their salaries, with their wages that they're paying their laboratory technicians, because, and we're going to talk about this, the lab is is the people. The lab is the folks performing the testing. Uh, and, and so, you know, making sure that your salary and wage uh, uh, levels are dialed in uh, is going to make your uh, satisfaction levels, your morale levels in the lab uh, higher and more resilient to issues like understaffing or, uh, or other changes in healthcare.